Today, we're here with Lana Coronado, and uh, we're going to talk about business exiting, uh, buying, selling, and what it looks like to maximize the value of your business when we exit. Your background. So what got you into mergers and acquisitions, M&A? M&A, okay. Well, again, that was uh, kind of uh, an accident, actually um, a real accident. Um, I've, uh, Not another I've gotten... boy? No, not another boy, but you know how, uh, again, the saying goes, you know, if something happens, if I, if I ever get hit by a truck, well, I actually got hit by a truck, uh, by, uh, by an 18 wheeler, which left me very, very, uh, broken physically. Um, and, um, there are some other things that, that transpired in my life that, that kind of left me at a, at a crossroads. So um, at that point, I decided that I wanted to do something different. Um, I had been an investor. I've, I've retired from IT very, very early, moved out west, and then kind of did the, the very boring, uh, you know, but I was just investing in stocks, uh, basically. But then that life-changing experience made me think that I wanted to be uh, real, I wanted to, to, to invest in more real businesses and work with real people. And uh, so this is how I got into m and I, um, I took a course and I uh, learned about it. I figured out that it's actually sounding a lot more fun than I thought. Um, so I started investing in real businesses. I see that you have a book coming out, right? So tell me about where that came about and uh, tell me about your co-author and just, you know, what's it about? Okay, yes. Yeah. So, um, well, you already know that I started investing in businesses, started working with businesses. And so what happens there is uh, people started approaching me about buying their business. And very soon I realized that there's a lot of businesses that are not really businesses. They're basically people um, self-employed. They're working, they, they don't have a boss, they're working for themselves. So they're calling themselves a business, but when it comes to selling that business, so to speak, it's really nothing, there's really nothing to buy. So, and then by nature, I'm the kind of person that cares a lot. Um, so it, it's very, very hard for me to say no to somebody. It's, it's very hard to, to, for me to turn away somebody. Um, so I kind of came up with the trick um, in, in my own head. I thought that, well, if I just help these people bring their businesses up to par, if I can do something to help the, uh, help the people make that business into a business buy, worth buying, um, then it would be, um, it would be helpful. Um, I wouldn't feel so bad about turning them away. And so this is how it started. I created this report, basically, uh, that said, you know, these are the steps that you can take that, that can make your business uh, be a better business or, or be a closer business to business than, uh, than a self-employment. Um, and I, um, I reached out to my friend, uh, Scotty Schindler, um, who is actually a business person who has built the business. He started the business and he's had an exit. So I reached out to him and I said, hey, you know, you, you've built a business, you, you've sold the business, can you read this report? And uh, give me your feedback, see how, uh, see how it feels um, from your end. He read it and he said, well, you know, the content is good. You should, you should write more about it. Uh, that there should be a lot more. And I said, well, do it with me. Uh, you know, by the way, I've, uh, English, you've noticed, is not my first language. So I never in my life thought that I would write a book. <laughs> but <laughs> I told him, well, you write it with me. And he said, okay, great. Um, so we kind of got together and we built this, this relationship and, and we wrote the book almost from the point of he said, she said, except that now it's from the point uh, of the buyer versus the point of the seller. So he tells his story and then how he sees that. And then I tell my story as an investor and how I see the whole transaction. And we just go through the steps and we... Um, we basically talk about all these little things that you can do to improve on your business, to make your business worth selling or make your business worth buying to somebody who is looking um, to buy a business. Um, so that's, uh, that's what the book is. All so about. without giving the entire book away, and we don't want you to do that. We want people to read the book. What would be the one thing, the one thing that just kind of sticks with you that's missing 
in most of the businesses that you see that really that's what that they focused on that it would help with the other stuff succession, succession planning <laughs> yes right yes and by the way i uh, i don't have a problem actually i wanted to offer that to you ron if any of your uh listeners out there would like to send you their email address i will be more than happy to send them a free copy so but in that process what's one thing that you wish you had like you know you know now but you wish you had known on day one okay so uh again i'll start with the same with a common same common knowledge it's not what you know it's who you know and i would say it is mostly true uh, with a little bit of a caveat, I would add a little bit to it. And I would advise people to not just go out and look for connections, but learn something. Learning is always good no matter what. Um, education, it's not going to weigh on you. It's only going to be helpful every time. The interesting thing is, is I am a big believer in um, that network, right? I'd pay what I paid. You know, some of these courses aren't cheap. I'd pay what I paid for that last course that you and I did together. And uh, I don't have approval to use their name, so we won't do that here. But um, I pay, I would pay that just for the network. The people I met inside of that community are absolutely amazing people. Absolutely true. Absolutely true, Ron. And then uh, um, I do want to add that you are you are actually quite good at the, at the networking. Uh, you you have that. You seem to have that down. You just have that kind of personality that you, you just make it so easy to talk to. And uh, you, you make that happen. And this is actually, I would like to use you as an example of that because you do. How did that come about? Tell us a little bit about, you know, MBH uh, as, as much as you want to. And uh, I mean, it's cool to be the chairman of a board and you have your ticker symbol. I, that's a goal now I have. I have a goal in my <laughs> profile to, to be able to tell people what my ticker symbol is. That would be awesome. So tell us about that. Uh, yeah, well, I will I will tell you a real, a really, really quickly because I think that's a podcast in its own right. And so, uh, I uh, again, I would like to facilitate that for you um, and and bring somebody um, onto your podcast to talk about that. But in short, I can tell you that um, it's built on this very new model called agglomeration. Uh, there were two uh, two co-founders there, Jeremy Harbour and Callum Lang. They came up with this um, idea, so they created MBH, uh, which is basically a platform to enable businesses to grow and break through the glass ceiling, break through that uh, scale paradox. And you know what that is? It's, it's you know when you, when you have a small business, and we're talking about you know maybe ten, twenty million dollars in revenue. Once you come to that level. It gets very, very hard. It's easy to grow up to that level, but then once you get to that level, it gets it gets very hard to break through that because you come to the scale paradox. It's you know if you, if you want to have a bigger contract, you have to be a bigger company, but you can't become a bigger company if you don't have the bigger contract. So this is what MBH provides. Actually, we have the platform. We we have the the publicly traded company. So we invite companies to join us and now keep running the business the way they are. We don't take their uh, the branding or anything uh, like that. They keep running the business the way they are. They have built it. We have full trust and, and then just full confidence in the business owners to keep running their businesses the way they, they did. And uh, we just provide them with that platform. So now they can use our status as a publicly traded company and the combined revenue levels and the combined EBITDA levels. So now they, they could go out and get those bigger contracts and, and that just grows. And we also provide them the platform to buy other businesses underneath. So um, this is, you know, the Jeremy's uh, favorite saying, it's, uh, it's all about democratizing wealth. Um, and that is absolutely true. So we're providing for uh, the platform, again, it's a platform for the businesses who are not looking for exit. So um, this is not for businesses who are looking to sell, to sell. This is for business owners who have the companies and they're looking to grow those companies um, and then just be successful. But, um, <laughs> what is one common myth, you know, in this industry, like the business owners probably here, right? I kind of know what mind thinking is, but what's the one common myth in this profession that, you know, you wish it wasn't there? 
the, the common myth is that the world of M&A is just full of the, these heartless robots. And it couldn't be further from truth. Um, and I understand that, uh, you know, there's, there's always a few bad apples in, in any box. Um, and they unfortunately make that bad name, that mad, bad rapport, but bad reputation. Um, but I actually, well, you and I are in the, same, uh, in the same network, and I can honestly tell you, I can't even, I can't even imagine how how some of these people could be could be even perceived as, as heartless. I've met so many great people. They're just uh, uh, they're just all heart. They're caring. They have families. They're human people. Um, and and I don't know. Maybe maybe you and I are just lucky to be in this network. That, that that's different. But I I do um, I do believe that it's not luck. It's just uh, they're they're just wonderful people. And then so that is the myth. I think that M um, and A is some is it, is this kind of a you know mysterious and and, and heartless world. It is not. Um, after all the questions I've asked you, you know, I always like to ask this question. What should I have asked? What, what's the question that somebody interviewing somebody with your skill set, your, you know, you're, you're buying and selling business, you're the chairman of the board, you got a book coming out, you've got investment history. There's got to be a question that, man, he should ask me this because his audience needs to know it. So is there, is there a question out there? Uh, yes. So if I were you, I'd be asking, what is the most important thing in the world, Lana? And my, my answer would be, is not money, it's not success, it's not fame and fortune, it's time. Um, it's time for you. Um, and, and of course, it'll be different for everyone what that time means to them. Um, to me, it's, and I'm pretty sure it is to you as well, it's family, it's kids, it's time to do what, you know, what, what drives you. What drives me is care. Um, you know, I I am very very much uh, um, enthralled in, in, into anything, any industry that has a, a word care in it. Um, I love helping. I love uh, you know, I, I love helping. So we actually with Labruta family with the Labruta Capital, we have a whole lot uh, a bigger goal there where we're going to be helping a whole lot. And uh, what's most important to me is the time that I need to be able to help others. Sure. If where do listeners reach out to, where do you want them to connect with you? So if they want to follow you, see what you're up to, what's your, I guess, flavor of choice in the social media world? Um, okay. Well, I, I don't participate in social media other than LinkedIn. Um, I am very easily found on LinkedIn. Um, it, it's LinkedIn and then Lana uh, dash Coronado. And I also have my personal website, which is Coronado Results. Uh, Coronado as in Coronado, California, and then the word results. That's all one word, dot com. And from there, um, I could be connected with, uh, through any, whether it's Labruta, whether it's uh, Holdings, whether it's MBH, um, the, depending on what the person's needs are, um, then I can, I can take them to that direction. 